the next video we gonna, are going to watch is titled Making a Mesh. And uh, this is going to be quite a fun ride. Now, my guess is, because uh, of who this is from, uh, Gal Got 100 is this is going to be a bunch of out of context clips, but it's probably going to be pretty funny. So let's go ahead and watch this together. Playing around with, I, I think I've mentioned this before, but the possibility of having sort of um, servers in the same data server all working together on the same area or instance. Doing that will potentially be able to have more um, players in an area than one server can simulate. This is, that's, this is still very early, uh, but that's one of the, the, the sort of approaches that we're looking at. So that's one of the approaches they're looking at. They're, it's not even a, a fully planned feature at that point. We're planning to um, have sort of uh, seamless server transitions and basically mesh the servers together. So it's like, okay, I'm updating these people, but there's one guy that's over here that's coming towards you and you've got a guy over here. So this server is saying, oh, this is where this guy is. So this, this server knows and has a sort of copy of him in his memory space and vice versa. So you can, you can sort of basically resolve overlaps uh, between sort of server control areas. And so that's kind of the, and the idea is as more and more people come in, you spin up more and more servers and they all mesh together. So you can ultimately have, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of people all simulating essentially in the same instance, actually a you know, more advanced and I think uh, ultimately better solution than what we talked before, which was sort of much more uh, sort of instance on top of each other and you can only see you can only ever see you know 30 other people or 50 other people or whatever it would be um, and i think that uh it's gonna be good so that's what we're working towards i think it's gonna be a pretty cool experience i'm actually quite excited by the tech uh that we're working for this um you know it's not gonna happen overnight it's gonna take a lot of time because we're building something that's really you know we're right on the cutting edge of this kind of stuff now we're gonna hear from clive he's gonna okay so Again, nothing really there that is giving dates. And it's it's still, it explained how they're explaining the tech right now, too. The only thing is like the cutting edge when server meshing has been a thing for a really long time in other games, but not like this. To, I don't uh, think. give you guys some insight into, uh, into the programming work that's going into uh, the networking refactor. Ultimately, where we're trying to get, get to is get the, uh, the game servers talking to each other, which will take Star Citizen from being a, an online game to a, a massively multiplayer online game. I, I love Clive because he seems to be very grounded in his statements uh, for the most part. And like, you know, calling Star Citizen just an online game and not an MMO, I think is like pretty fucking based for somebody who works there. And um, yeah, I, I just like it. He keeps it. He keeps it pretty real. That's got me. Re Unlike this guy really stoked is the server transition technology, which is going to break down the walls between the isolated server instances and start to finally push all of the players within the game together. Uh, that's a bit farther out. This guy lives in a server meshed environment already. Because we have to replace all of the low level uh, CryEngine network code, but it's going to have a huge impact across a wide spectrum of gameplay. And ultimately it's going to make the entire world feel much more alive. Some of the stuff we're doing on the network where we're going to have this sort of mesh of servers so we'll be able to have hopefully you know a large amount of players all in the same area so we don't have to instance it in the way that originally we we're thinking we we're gonna to have to instance it we have a kind of different server design now that could potentially have thousands of players all in the same sort of area we've already got persist so the the weird thing about this that I've, I've always found weird is they talked about it so much then that it made it seem like they were working on it or like it was actively like the server meshed part was part of it, you know, part of the work they were doing. And this is something that they always do. And why players feel like they're lied to is because they talk about something that they're just talking about. That is still just a theory, but they talk about it as if it was being worked on, as if it was a part of their day-to-day -day at that moment. And that's the, the misleading part. I don't consider that lying necessarily, but it, it is 
a very weird thing and it creates this misconception in the community that you know server meshing was something that they've been working on this whole time it's something they've been working towards but never actually working on so we can already you know, uh, save player state and restore it, you know, to, you know, to a particular configuration, um, you know, as you join a game. Um, and that's, that's already 75% of the way there. But Chris, Chris wanted to, you know, push the game to, you know, to, to a farther level versus, you know, um, you know, what all the, you know, what all these other games that approach this problem have done. And that may allow us to have 2000 people in the same area or whatever, but you know, what if there was meant to be 10,000? And then at that point we probably would still have to instance, but mm -hmm. We will do, you know, aim to do a test of that system at some point next year, to where we basically band a number of servers together, uh, you know, creating. And, and look, that statement's even even worse. Is that they're going to do a test next year? Well, the test either never happened or it failed. Yeah. You know, uh, a shard, you know, of, you know, of sorts. But 2016, I'm tr I try to black that year out of my mind because this was literally the worst uh, examples of their communication in, in the history of everything. To where we're testing the concepts that we're talking about here, but on a, on a much more localized scale. And this should ramp the game up to, don't know, you know right now, but it should be hundreds of players in a given, you know, uh, in, in one of these meshes. Really important thing is all the work they've done is actually um, is, is, is the basis of the server transition stuff, which is what we need to really get a bunch of players in there. Right. So when we can have you know when we can have a server control anything from a room, if we want to have a load of people in that room to a, a system, and then and then we can just we can transfer people seamlessly from server to server. Then all of a sudden we can put everybody in one game universe. I can't. He said, like, the work was largely done. Because we, all we do is we just increase the amount of servers depending on how many people are in there. And then if, if there's a very popular... So, so people are asking where this is from. This was from Gamescom 2017. ...room on a single planet, then we may just say, you know, God, there's like 500 guys want to be in that room. All right, we'll have just one server that cares about that room. And when they walk out that room, they'll then pass it to another server, which is then controlling the, the road outside exactly. and stuff like that and so forth and things. What will be the extent of the first pass on the server meshing plan for 3.4? For the first 4. pass version, we'll probably divide the Stanton system into sections and have one server manage each section. Once the initial version has been put through its paces, never mind, Clive is not a real one. As we will continue to improve and refine the technology with future pre alpha releases, incrementally bringing us closer to the final goal of a single shard universe. Uh, what network enhancements? What? Well, if it happened, it failed. You know, like whatever they tried failed. And I do want to point something out here. Clive seems to be very much still a part of this. But the UK studio, not so much. And I think we'll start seeing a trend here very shortly from a shift from everything being worked on this in the UK to everything being worked on this somewhere else. So beyond what is listed for 3.4 are needed before. Oh, we my God. Old Star Citizen audio. You remember this? And have two systems connected by a jump point. Um, so beyond 3.4. So 3.4, uh, we've got on the on the roadmap uh, server migration. Um, so right. we, we have to build a server migration tech, for, server meshing tech first, and then we'll, we'll see if we can utilize it that way. Fair enough. It's still a, the question was still a, a bit far out there. The final plan is obviously once we get the server meshing in, that won't be this year, but that will be coming in next year. That will allow everyone Here to play go. in one huge instance. So the it will be coming next year started in 2018. It will be coming next year started in 2018. With all the players. And then the final part obviously is the server meshing when will be able to, you know, so I think what will happen is with the object container streaming and then moving to the batch model of physics, we'll be able to get the player count on any one server to at least 200 or so. And then the server meshing will uh, allow us to go quite a bit beyond that in terms of people in uh, areas or instances um, in the close place. And then, 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 then that world becomes truly massive and everyone can sort of exist in the same area and adventure around and 
and, and live their virtual life. Well, and when we get to the, the full persistence and server meshing, I think at that point, that's when we're not going to be resetting the servers. It's when it will be an ongoing living, breathing game. Uh, and that, I'm not going to give you a date, but... That's not true. Because we don't even have an economy built out yet. So they're going to be resetting. What do you think about server meshing? Uh, I, I don't think we're anywhere near the point of no wipes yet. Personally. <laughs> Obviously, the big one for us, which is when I feel the game's going to be ready for prime time. I think this time, was the last time Aaron we'll ever was on camera. When we can put a bunch of people in one system. At the moment, we're in planning phase right now, and the work will start um, soon afterwards, and we'll be working on it this year. And then the final version of that is that's just sort of fluid. It's always just spinning up and adding servers as it needs it for load. Um, so that's kind of what we're, we are. We are working on that right now. So mm -hmm. we have our we have our top men, and then we really have top men, not not the Raiders of Lost Ark version of top mm -hmm. men. So Our you're envisioning world-scale environments that have thousands of people in them at once. Absolutely, and we're quite far along on the tech to deliver that. With the new cloud power, we're going to be able to do this thing we call server meshing which allows a whole bunch of servers to run in the cloud and talk to each other. If they all mesh together you could have all 4,000 people or 40,000 people in the same world at they the just, same time. They just make up numbers. If everything's in the cloud, there's almost no time difference to talk between servers and clients and there really isn't any difference between the two. The quality of a multiplayer experience will increase because you'll have much less latency. You won't have any issue of cheating. You eliminate the issues you get with lag. And then the last thing, uh, which uh, we won't, I think, get to by the end of next year, but we'll be very close to it, is server meshing. And so everything we've been doing up until then, and that's when I think everything fully comes alive. We're also looking at getting two servers talking to each other, which may surprise some people that that's not the first thing that we did. But it kind of was, because you know, obviously the first thing you try when you try and build server meshing is you just try and connect two servers together and you see what happens. And we weren't really expecting it to work and we weren't too surprised when they didn't. <laughs> but it was quite a useful exercise and it showed kind of what didn't work um, and what we would have to change to make it work. So we kind of built those tasks out and people are working through them right now. I think overall, it sounds like between the conversations Yikes. with you and, and Chad that we're making some pretty good progress. Uh, we're generally happy with where we're at. Server meshing is another big technical milestone ahead of us. This will allow us to greatly expand the number of the players beyond 50 to thousands concurrently. I mean, they have to keep explaining what server meshing is because there's constantly new players, right? But they have made the same statement over and over again for so many years. In the same instance. Like, again, at what point is it is this okay? At what point is anybody going to be okay with this? Like, this video is not a lot of things taken out of context. I think the context is largely there. And it is pretty damning. The question is no longer if, but when. But longer term, we've obviously got, you know, so, some some major, you know, some... The question is no longer if, but when, and then you read what was said yesterday from Clive, that they're still in the research and development phases. Major initiatives, you know, still on the horizon, you know, like server meshing. It's with the advent of server meshing, you know, on the horizon and... The answer should be simple. Allow multiple instances of the game server to work together so they can split up the work. Well, it's not quite that simple. It's an exponential problem, as in the worst case, each node would need to talk to each other node in the mesh, severely limiting our ability to scale it. To solve this issue, we are separating simulation and replication. Instead of just meshing multiple dedicated game servers Come on, together, cat and have them synchronize Cats state like between clicking each buttons other. and stuff. We are introducing a new layer Come called here. replication layer. We'll then follow up with the first version of a static server mesh, barring any unforeseen technical complications between... And this is what I, I somewhat like about the communication that's been going on lately. It's still really not great, but the difference now is the work is actually happening. And that entire time it was, the work will begin soon. Uh, we're largely our way there. And the difference is, is like the work is happening towards a feature that they fully plan on putting in the game and at least seeing if it works. 
uh, and instead of just saying that they're going to do something and never actually start it or say that they've done something and it not even be there. Q3 and Q4 of next year. We are aiming for the end of Q1 2023, but again, we really will not know with confidence until it hits testing. Yeah, and, and again, a, a little bit better on the communication. We won't know until it hits testing. Well, guess what? We haven't even gotten there for testing. We are aiming to put static server meshing and pyro into the hands of players in the fourth quarter of 2023. 2023. 2023. Yep. And he, he didn't even uh, have the info of uh, Clive more recently kind of taking Chris Roberts's words and, and saying that, hey, this is just research and development. We don't even know what's going to happen. So that is where we are with server meshing. Bit of a yikes. Bit of a yikes to really look back. And uh, I do find it interesting that he didn't touch on any of the uh, Montreal stuff, because basically Montreal ended up taking over what seems to be most of the work for server meshing and PES and all these other things. Um, a shift from, you know, Clive and, and these other people in the UK. So it seems like whatever they, to me, from the outside, it, uh, it seems to be whatever people were working on it before kind of struggled and they tried something else with another group to see how that goes and they certainly tried something new the replication layer was never like a thing that they had completely mentioned before although the very first clip chris kind of mentions that being a thing so um a tough year ahead in terms of server meshing and tech being finished but hopefully not a tough year ahead from some at least decently fun content to to give a try out for a couple weeks, a month, whatever, before you move on to other video games, right? I think that's what Star Citizen is going to be for the next little while. Uh, I just hope the kind of communication that we saw in the early years, especially the 2016 and earlier, is something that we never see again because, man, that's tough. That's tough to look back on because, I, I mean, you had to believe them at that point. Because you didn't know any better.